I want to show you a free circuit simulator. It's a JavaScript application originally created by Paul Falstad. If you're a student of computer science or electronics, I think you'll find it very useful. Particularly if you want to experiment with combinational logic circuits or sequential logic circuits. When you start the application, you'll see a circuit there already. It'll give you some idea of the capabilities of the application. There are also links down below, and here you can get directions to find out how it works. I'm going to create a new circuit. New blank circuit. I'm also going to put it into full screen mode, so I can see what I'm doing more easily. I want to build a JK flip-flop, so I'm going to place a couple of NAND gates onto the canvas. I can see a clock has started running on the bottom right of the screen. That's because the circuit is running as I build it. I'm going to stop that for now. I can copy and paste individual components. Control c to copy, Control v to paste. I can drag them into position. Let's add some wires to cross-connect these gates. I've added several small wires on this side because I'm thinking ahead about what kind of connections I might need here. But it's easy enough to delete something if you get it wrong. All you have to do is select it and press the delete key. Let's add some outputs. What I have already is a NAND based SR latch. To turn it into a JK flip flop, I'm going to need a couple of steering gates. Let's put some more NAND gates on this. In fact, I'm going to need NAND gates which have three inputs. Select it, right click, edit. And I can say how many inputs I want here. Let's copy that gate and I'll connect them to the circuit. To make this into a JK flip flop, I need to interlock the outputs with the inputs, like this. You can see why I gave myself some extra connection points over here now. I'll add some inputs. And now I'll send an enabling clock signal into the steering gates. I'll need some more wires. Add clock. I can also put text onto my circuit diagram to label the inputs and outputs. And there's my flip flop. Inputs J, K, and outputs Q and Q prime. Let's give it a go. The clock is ticking. The flip flop is currently in a high state. And I'll press K to reset. J to set. That's working nicely. And if I set both inputs high, then you can see when the clock is high, the latch begins to oscillate. What I need here is an edge detector immediately after the clock. Let's do that. I can build an edge detection device with an AND gate and a NOT gate. And now I'll reconnect the clock. 
Let's try it out now. You can see it's only toggling between high and low on the rising edge of the clock. Something I really like about this application is the ability to create timing diagrams. I do this by adding a scope, that is, an oscilloscope, like this. I just select a point on the diagram and say that I want to view it in a new scope. There's the rising edge of the clock pulse. Let's put output Q on there as well. I have two scopes side by side. I'd actually like to stack them. And now I can see how the value of Q is reacting to the rising edge of the clock. I can see from these charts that it's not quite perfect yet. There's a bit of a wobble between high and low and between low and high on the occasional rising edge of the clock. I need to improve the edge detection device, shorten the pulse a little bit more. Nevertheless, I've got the basic behaviour, the fundamental action of a JK flip-flop here. I'll say again, if you're a student of electronics or computer science, this is well worth a go, and it won't cost you anything. When you've created a diagram, you can save it. One final thing I'd like to mention is that there are lots of pre-built circuits that you can play around with. For example, there's an 8-bit ripple counter There's a full adder. There's even a model of dynamic RAM.